Welcome to Confidence Connections, where we discuss the latest K-20 trends with thought leaders across the industry. In this episode, we chat with Joshua Samuel, founder and CEO of Coins for College at FETC 2023. The topic of this discussion is college planning. Enjoy Conference Connections, powered by Ed Circuit. Hey everybody, I'm Dan with Ed Circuit. We're here at FETC. Came across Joshua, CEO and founder of Coins for College. Joshua, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. So tell us a little bit about Coins for College. Well, Coins for College is a platform that prepares students mentally, financially, and academically for college, and not just college, but success in college, career, and life. Wonderful. So basically, your organization gives kids a whole bunch of money so they don't have to pay for college? Well, that's, I like to think of it that way, but it's, it's a little more complicated, but not so much. So, right. so we sit to prepare them mentally, financially, and academically. Currently, when you think of the way students get into college, the number one thing that comes to mind is probably SAT. You score 1,600 points on an SAT score. You basically just wrote yourself a blank check to just about any institution, college institution around the world. So one could say that those 1,600 SAT points have a dollar figure associated. And the problem with that is that the SAT is something that happens at the very tail end of your K-12 journey. It's a snapshot of one moment. With the Coins for College platform, we reward students with something we call scholarship points. Scholarship points are data points that colleges are able to use to make a more informed and holistic decision regarding admission and financial package. So above and beyond what they would normally get from an assessment outside of the SATs or even a report card, you're talking about data points about that student, their integrity, their experience in school. Absolutely, absolutely. There's four different areas that students earn scholarship points on our platform for. One is attendance. You gotta show up. You miss even one day of school, you can find yourself behind for the rest of the semester. They check themselves into school each day, they earn 10 scholarship points. They have a streak where they have five days or more, now they're earning scholarship points at a higher rate. Number two is supplemental learning. Post-COVID, we know that a lot of students big knowledge gaps, they lost a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. So on the platform, we have educational resources built by educators, created, curated by educators on the platform that students are able to consume. And as they engage with those educational resources, they're earning scholarship points. The third way to earn is through assessments. In fact, assessments account for 70%. I grew up in a school district where unfortunately the rigor did not match that of the neighboring town. So there was 12 chapters in the, the math textbooks. We never made it past chapter eight. Right. Classroom behavior issues and all sorts of other things, overcrowded classrooms. So when it came time to take the SAT, it didn't matter that I was an A-plus student. There were some things that was Chinese to me. I did not understand it at all. I, I was never exposed to it. So on the Coins for College platform, these assessments reveal those knowledge gaps. And as those knowledge gaps are revealed, they're able to go to our vast library of educational content. And based on how they perform, content is suggested to them. They consume that content on their own time and they fill those knowledge gaps. So there's an assessment built into the platform. Absolutely. Okay. Lots of is the content from, is it aligned to standards? Is it aligned to moving to the assessment? Or is it OER, what type of content it's, is it? So, so every piece of content that comes on top of our platform, the, as teachers are creating it, we, they are able to align it directly to the standards. And, 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 and the standards for any state. So of course you have your common core standards, but sure. in Texas, Virginia, there's other standards. And, and they're able to, do we have the tools right there on the platform to align it to standards. Wonderful. Yeah. It's really interesting. Okay, what was the fourth one? The fourth one is is extracurricular activities, community service, sports, uh, a college tour. So all of those things that a college wanna see about the individual outside of academics, because that is a part of your college application. Okay. How early on in a student's life cycle through the academic students can they start with Coins for College? Kindergarten. 
We want them to start at kindergarten, and here's why. In kindergarten, there's something called a token economy. And it looks like this. Kid gets something correct, they get a star next to their name, they get a sticker. Smiley and, stickers, I was like, yeah. yeah. And they get a smiley face, maybe. And they loved it. Yep. They, I loved kindergarten because I was rewarded for my activity. Yep. First grade, I didn't want a sticker anymore. I wanted one of those little army figures. I, I wanted a trinket, I wanted some candy. Right. Uh, by second grade, it was hard for a teacher to afford what I wanted. And by third grade, it was impossible. The token economy went away. And I think it's not a coincidence that it's by third grade that students start asking that question. What am I here for? What, what is school? Why, why do I need to know this? I'm going to be a baseball player. Why, why do I need to know math? And if a teacher cannot answer that question, why am I here? And it's a different answer for every student then I believe that's where the descent be starts to happen and the, the, the loss of interest. And school becomes more of a social uh, paradigm than it is a, a learning experience. So what we've done through Coins for College is we've gamified learning. And, and we've done it in such a way where students are able to earn their own way to college. We have a financial dashboard where they're able to see their progress and how they're earning scholarship points that ultimately will lead to a bunch of money for college. Of course, of course. So one of the things you described, and it resonated with me, my kids like into Animal Crossing now. And okay. you see, like the more you play it every day, you get more, more fish in the sea and more rewards. And it's all about this reward system. Yep. Roblox, all these things, yep. right? So you've taken that and you've turned that gamification into a reward system to educate students more on the importance of college, the importance of getting into college, not just academically, but as a well-rounded entity as the individual. Absolutely. You've summarized that so well. And back to your original question of how old and what age should they start, K through second grade is the highest level of parental engagement, where the parent believes their child will be the next president of the United States of America or an astronaut or a doctor or a lawyer and and they believe that their child is a genius and, and they are right and after second grade it starts to drop off that by the time they're in high school it's almost non-existent and school districts complain that there's simply no parental engagement well while there may be a lack of parental engagement as students go further in their education, what increases as they go through that K through 12 journey is a parent's worry of how they're gonna pay for college. Sure. And if they can't pay for college, it's it's not brought up, it's not discussed, it's not talked about. And if it's not talked about, then students are not prepared mentally for college. And if they're not prepared mentally for college, they tend to not be prepared academically. So. From kindergarten, if a parent understands that the more scholarship points their child earns throughout their K-12 journey, it will pave the way for college to be paid for, well, now you have parental engagement at a much higher level, starting at kindergarten and carrying through, if nothing else, how many scholarship points you got today? Right. Interested in sharing your voice with the K-20 and EdTech community? EdCircuit empowers thought leaders across education to share their voices with their audience. Visit edcircuit.com to learn more. You do a really good job articulating not the word, not using the word guarantee, yeah. paving the way, setting the stage, architecting a plan for college outside of just your grades. So very well done on that front because Thank you. there is no guarantees. That's correct. You know, and you don't want the perception out there that, hey, you sign up for coins for college. You do a really good job. You earn 10,000 coins and you're going to Princeton. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> well said. Could go. And I appreciate happen. that. And awesome. you know, there's merit scholarships. A merit scholarship says, um, I know for Indiana University, I have a friend whose daughter had just missed the deadline. And by missing that deadline, she missed out on $44,000 uh, merit scholarships. Now, the thing with the merit scholarship is you merit it. It's not based on you fill out an application, and depending on how well you do on that application, you get the, the scholarship. No, the merit is based on what you've done throughout your K through 12 journey up to that point. That's the true merit. 
and what we're doing on the Coins for College platform is aligning those scholarship points with the requirements of that merit, of that merit scholarship. So if we keep students at or above grade level, starting from kindergarten, yep. you avoid the knowledge gaps. You avoid the gaps that unfortunately is too wide to overcome if you start in 14, 14 years of age or ninth grade to well, get serious about college. It's like anything in the subject area, right? The middle school students get always left behind. Most, most of the school systems say, hey, if we didn't get up by middle school, ah, they're probably gonna be lost. Let's focus on the K-5 elementary. Wrong answer, we all know it. it's the wrong answer, it's what happens at all day long. So, you know, a great company is always behind an amazing CEO and founder. This is an entrepreneurial effort, but there's gotta be a story behind this. For you. So, I grew up in the foster care system. And then growing up in the foster care system, you move from home to home to home to home. And it was tough for me. It was, it was really, really tough. And at the age of 12, I went into a boys' home, group home. It's another boys. There's not a mother, father figure in the house. They're staff members. They work in eight hour shifts, they come and go. And when you turn 18, you age out of the foster care system. If you're in college, you stay till you're 21. So in the foster care system, there's, like I said, mommy, daddy figure. But in the boys' home, that don't exist. And when you turn 18 years of age, there's not a mother or father that's like, hey, we're going to work this out and let's help you out. You know, at 18 years of age, I watch with my own eyes, friend after friend, age out, and on your birthday, on the exact day of your birthday with a big black garbage bag, they pack all your belongings and drive you down to the local shelter. If the shelter is full, which many times it was, you are homeless. And what happened to many of my friends is that they either uh, died on the streets or went to jail. And, and jail was the, the preferred option because you get three meals and, and, and a place to sleep. And um, one particular guy, Jermaine, you know, grew up with him. His younger brother was still in the group home. He hit 18 years of age, came knocking on the door three days later, hungry, disheveled, dirty, and they could not let him in. He slept in the group home's van that night. Uh, three months later, they found him dead on the street. And that just impacted me in such a, a, a strong way. I had intrinsic value for going to college because I wanted those three extra years. So think about it. You can't get a real job until you're 18. And if you can't get a real job until you're 18, so it's not like you could you had a job and I could save up to pay rent, right? So I gotta wait till I'm 18. But if I'm not in college, then on my 18th birthday, when I can get a job, I now have a much bigger concern. Where am I going to sleep? Where are you going to sleep? How am I going to iron my shirt to go on an interview? Right. So the system was so messed up. And, and I said, well, what do I, I need to go to college. So the plan was to go to college. Those three years, I could have a job, save up, and then I could pay for rent and food and take care of myself. Right. And so starting from 12, I asked people, how do I get to college? And the answer was the same every single time. And you got time. You got time. Wait till you get to high school and then you spot that kind of stuff. So I get to high school, beeline to the guidance counselors, and they said, oh, you're just a freshman. You got until you're a junior. I said, okay, the stakes is kind of high here, but okay, if you say so. Now, if I'm going to go to college, why not aim for the best, right? I've set my mind from 12 years old, I'm going to college. I want to go to Columbia University. It's, it's it's Ivy League school, and they say Ivy is good. So yeah. I want to be in an Ivy League school, Columbia University. That was the plan. So 16 years old, finally get to speak with the guidance counselor about going to college. She says, here's the steps. Great, cool, easy. Right. I'm ready for it. I want to go to Columbia University. Nope, that can't happen. Right. It can't happen. It's too late. It's too late. Well, if you wanted to go to Columbia University, you had to be on a trajectory that started at least in middle school. You, you had to take you had to take pre-algebra in eighth grade so that by the time you got to high school, 
you take it, so by the time you're in 12th grade, you're taking pre-calculus, and then you'll be able to compete with the students that get accepted to right. from university, it's too late. And I said, I've been trying to get on this trajectory Great. thing since I was 12. Coins for College systemizes the process with or without the assistance of a guidance counselor of sorts. And, yeah. Because the scholarship points tell the stories. It does. And half the time the guidance office is overwhelmed. It's a you know, 3,000 to 1 ratio. That and that exactly what it was get to everybody. in my high school. It was yeah. 3,000 students, Truman High School in the Bronx. 3,000 students. It was horrible. Where did you end up going to college? A, a community college. And went there for a year and then I transferred into a four-year college okay but I had to go that route of course transfer into Lehman High School which is one of the better in the CUNY system in New York City yep. but um, didn't have support ended up having to drop out and to, to make a living you know and and that was my story and so what coins for college ultimately will do for students is allow them to take ownership of their journey one of the most important parts of the component, our tagline is it starts with the coin. You need resources, educational resources. We're here at FETC and there's a bunch of vendors offering some really great content. Content is king. And that content is premium. And the, the, the best uh, ed tech platforms, they, they hire educators because educators create the most premium content. The content on our platform is also created by, by educators, but we took a Uber approach. So by that, what I mean is, when I used to call for a taxi in my, in my city before, I was a small city, suburb off of San Francisco Bay Area, uh, it was the same taxi driver that came and picked us up every single time. Okay. And he was overcharged, and, and his, his car didn't smell too good. But we didn't have any other choices. Right. Uber came along and said, anyone, with a license and a clean car, a good car, right. can uh, kind of work in these mini shifts, right? You can pick up a shift whenever you want and you can tap into this trillion dollar industry of taking people to their destination. Sure. Transform the world. I love it. Points for College does the same thing. Okay. We allow teachers to take that content, which they already create, most of it on their own time, and add it to our platform. It could be one lesson. It could be a thousand lessons. And as you add that premium content to our platform, we reward you with what we call tuition coins. Tuition coins is a digital currency similar to Bitcoin that increases in value with mass adoption. Well, what other better community to cause that mass adoption effect than the millions, 85 million teachers worldwide that is doing something that they already do every single day and adding that content to the platform. As students consume that premium content, they're earning scholarship points, which colleges will recognize as data points to make that more informed decision to give them scholarships. But for the educator, they have these things called tuition coins that is increasing in value because so many other teachers are using it and speculators are getting it for their own speculative reasons and philanthropists and friends and family and loved ones are purchasing tuition coins to give to students to help cover what the scholarship points do not cover. Okay, so talk to me a little bit more about this teacher Bitcoin solution. It's, it's, it's actually, it's not money. Right? Well, Yet, maybe. Scholarship points are not money. Correct. Tuition coins are, are money. money. Yes. Okay. So, how much success have you have with the teachers, obviously, building the content? Like, what's the most amount of money a teacher's made so far? Well, we just started. Okay. In fact, so, Fair teachers, enough. right now, what teachers are able to earn are what we call governance tokens. Okay. And in the world of cryptocurrency, governance tokens are basically tokens that are held by people who make the decisions. And we want teachers making the decisions. So, from now until fourth quarter, Teachers who submit content on our platform are earning governance tokens, which means they get to make decisions about the platform going forward. Okay. And tuition coins become available for teachers 
starting the first quarter of 2024, those who already have governance tokens will receive uh, an amount of tuition coins proportionate to how many governance tokens they have. Got it. And at that point, they will be able to exchange their tuition coins on an exchange like Binance or Intuition Exchange, which is our exchange, um, for regular currency. So, so we basically got to look at the camera and say, teachers, we want you. Yeah. Right? Come on over to Coins for College. Yeah. Get the content you've been using all the time. Yes. Get upload on a platform and make some money while doing it. That's what he just said. That's it. Right. <laughs> awesome. Um, how do teachers get a hold of you? So, coinsforcollege.org. And you can sign up, get on the waiting list for to earn tuition coins or start adding content to the platform. Are you, you are a 501c3? No, we're not. Are you going we in that work, direction? We work close with, so the idea is to partner with 5013Cs because they provide the wraparound services that students need yep. to make it to college. Wonderful. And one of our partnerships right now is with the Boys and Girls Club of Contra Costa, where every dollar that vendors at FETC donate or pledge towards the Contra Costa Boys and Girls Club, we are donating 10 tuition coins up to $25,000. Wonderful. That's great. We'll just keep on giving back and the community is going to turn around and pay it forward back to you. Thank you. So it'll be great. Thanks for your time. Awesome. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much for your time. This episode of Conference Connections was powered by Ed Circuit. Ed Circuit's mission is to share guidance and expertise in facilitating the appropriate use of digital technology in education. Through our weekly articles, podcasts, and video series, we give a voice to members of the K-20 and EdTech communities. To learn more about our mission and various content, visit edcircuit.com and subscribe to be up to date on the latest thought leadership in the educational industry. For more information, follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube.